Well, hello. So, like I said yesterday, or in the last vlog, um, I am planning today to ascend um, Mount, what is it called? Mount Humphreys, which is the tallest mountain in Arizona. I will be stargazing with Matt, and who knows what else? We will see what happens. But let me just tell you, three things just happened this morning that I must, I must report. Um, number one, I was lying in bed, and suddenly, let me turn this way so you're not staring at the bright light, um, I was awoken by all of the neighborhood dogs barking. Like, literally, there's just a cacophonous sound of like 400 dogs barking all at once, and that woke me up. So when I kind of like was like in my days, like, oh my gosh, what's happening? Is the garbage man here or something? And like, as I was kind of coming to, the bed was vibrating. And at this point, Matt had already left um, and everybody had left for work. So it was just me in the house and here in Flagstaff and I was lying in the bed and the whole bed was like vibrating. It was crazy. So I had my first West Coast earthquake experience. Crazy. Um, and the second thing I want to report is that um, I think I showed this to you when I was giving the tour of the house, but being alone in a place that's not your home, you naturally kind of, I don't know, you're a little bit not completely at home, you know, like it's not your home. But um, so I really love this place and I feel very comfortable by it and everything. So I actually came down in like my PJs, which isn't, is basically an oversized shirt. So I was coming downstairs expecting nobody to be here and I was not fully dressed or anything. And I come downstairs and I see this. And I literally freaked out. I screamed bloody murder. I, I'm, I hope the neighbors don't think somebody died because, I mean, you know, I was exposed. I was, if, I, if that were the person, I, yeah. So I had like a major freak out this morning because of Mr. Bear here sitting. He normally is up there on top of the, on top of the like wall thing here by the stairs, but somebody, put him in the chair right there like a real little person and it scared the bejesus out of me. Um, so there was that. And then the third thing is, I just have to say, I know a lot of people here on the West Coast and I've never been, I've been to LA, which I guess um, is kind of, you know, its own little bubble of what the West Coast is like. So I've been here in the desert in Arizona um, for probably five days now and I can't, I, cannot adjust to the dryness here. Like I am lathering on several times a day moisturizer because my hands and everything are just like turning to ash. But more importantly, I'm like, I can't breathe well. I'm like full of congestion and like just crazy dryness. Like I, I have this little singer thing that's like a personal face steamer. So you just like plug it in and you have water in here and it boils and you stick your face on like right in there and you breathe in the steam, which helps, but only for a certain amount of time, you know, it's like you steam for 10 minutes and then you dry up in 20. So I don't know. Do you guys have any recommendations for how to, it's probably, I mean, probably the best solution is just buying a humidifier, but since that's not an option while I'm out and about, in, in not my own home, like, do you have suggestions? If you do, if you've been out west and you know what to do, or if you live out west, like, can you leave a comment or something below to tell me if, like, what, what you do? Because, like, I, I, I wake up with blood in my nose and, not to get too graphic, but just a lot of mucus and stuff just because of the dryness. It's not letting my saliva just, like, be. It's, like, congealing and ugh. Which, now, like, to say the least, is not pleasant for my singing because I'm just like <laughs> So, there you have it. Those are my three updates for you this morning. Not super interesting, but that's what my life is right now. So I will see you guys when the next adventure begins at, I believe the mountain will be the next thing, but who knows. All right.
So sometimes adventures don't go the way you planned. <sighs> I've been sitting, at least I have this view. Look at that. It's nice. So I am pretty close to the bottom of the mountain that I was planning on ascending because um, I took a cab from Matt's place to the ski lift place and um, the Google Maps took me to the first lodge and not the second lodge and I got there right at the time that I was supposed to get there <coughs> which was four but I was supposed to be at a different lodge <coughs> so I went I called and I said I'm at the, this lodge and they said oh we're at this lodge um, but you know be here now and I said well I'll run I'll be there in five seconds so I ran <coughs> and I'm currently 11,000 feet in above sea level and it's hard to run but I did and now I have a wheeze and a cough because of it and I ran to the second lodge and I got there at 405 because it was straight uphill at 11,000 feet elevation I got there at 405 and I walk up to the desk and they know it was me so they just immediately said, I'm sorry, we can't do anything for you after all of this. <clears throat> and, like, they started saying it was some reason for the, like, because of the sunset and the timing of the sunset. But then when I pressed a little further, I was like, really, there's a difference? But the sunset is at 6.08. I looked it up. And their last um, trip down the mountain is 4.45 so that you get there by, like, 5.20 so that nobody's up there in the dark, because it's darker up there sooner than it is down on the ground. Um, <clears throat> I was like, are you telling me that there was a difference in my safety between 4 o'clock and 4.05? Because I don't think so. There was no reason. So then I pressed a little further, and the guy just said, you know, like, we would have had to pay this person and this person and me and this person and this person to, like, stay here extra time because of you. Um, which isn't even true because they have to sit there and wait till the last people come down the mountain, which, like I just said, is like 520. So they're going to be manning the lift anyway until 520 or so, and the difference between 4 o'clock and 405 would not have made any difference because the chairs are still going up. Ugh. But, so I called my mom, and she told me that I should just look at this like, um, I... I have experienced all of these other wonderful things while here, and this is just not one of them. So just to let it go, and we'll come back some other day and tell those people that they were horrible to me. <laughs> <coughs> See? Cough. Great. Um, so there you go. Some sad times on the amazing Arizona adventure. Had a not-so-amazing ending. But Matt's going to go with me out to see the stars. Hopefully it's a clear night um, under the desert sky. So hopefully that will be a success and maybe we'll eat something good in between. But in the meantime, just hanging out. Looking at this. I guess it could be worse. It could be raining, right? Alright, see you guys later. So, I left you guys last night um, when I was pretty sad sitting on the mountain because they wouldn't let me go up the mountain. Um, and I'm happy to say that my, between my mother and Matt, I was consoled and rejuvenated, I, could, I guess I could say. Um, that it was still, I saw a beautiful sunset over some other mountains, and Matt came and picked me up and we. Um, we went and got pizza, and then we went stargazing out in the desert, and it was gorgeous. You could just see everything. It was, it's one of my favorite things to do on vacation or otherwise, but because I live in cities, often, I mean, Princeton is a super city, but it's close to New York, and Matt's in Boston, my parents are in Richmond, there's just not a whole lot of um, great stargazing opportunities as like, compared to out in the middle of nowhere. Um, so it's just always like a huge thing to me, like to go out wherever I am in the mountains or at a beach or um, in the desert or whatever, 
to go see the stars. So it was incredible. I tried to vlog a little bit um, and take pictures, but it was completely pitch black wherever we were, and it was kind of just too much of a production to like shine a light on me and blah blah blah. So we enjoyed the romantic um, silence of nature, laid in the grass on a blanket, and just looked at the stars, and it was glorious. And that was my last night. So it was it was a great finishing little kind of quiet closure to the wonderful trip. And then we went home and um, went to bed really early. <laughs> We've been going to bed at like 8 o'clock every night in, in uh, this time zone, but that's around 11 my time, so I'm, I'm doing pretty good with the East Coast time. Um, and then this morning, I woke up and did a bunch of things around the house, like got my stuff together, did laundry, went to... Um, I didn't go anywhere, but... I don't know, I just did a bunch of things around the house, practiced a little bit, did a little work, and um, you can hear sniffling because I have like, I don't know, I don't know if it's a sinus infection or I don't know if it's just not happy with this dryness I was telling you about the other day, like it's just, my nose is not liked being here, it started out really, really, really dry and bloody, like every time I blew my nose murder scene um, and now it's gone the other way where it's just like way like runny all the time so I don't know what's going on but I'm hoping that being in a more humid tropical climate it will like it a little better who knows um, so this morning um, I got all my things together and uh, practice and all that and then Matt let, told me that he was gonna get me my Uber to come here to the Flagstaff Airport and you know he's like be ready by 11:35. That they'll probably be there around then. And I'll, he'll text me when it's coming. And I was like, you know, ready to go. And then Matt walks in the door at 11:35, and it was the sweetest surprise ever. It was so I was shocked, shocked. But he apparently they got their this Friday off because it was like a really slow day at the office and um, it was the end of their first week so they were just like y'all can go we can handle any walk-ins that come on Friday afternoon no big deal so they got out early yay! and um, so they they all came home and they, they had some lunch with me and then Matt you know got me ready to go and loaded the stuff loaded the car with my stuff and it was it was such a good surprise it was like the best thing ever um, so now I'm at the airport, and the flight I have, I, I have a connecting flight from Flagstaff to Phoenix, and then Phoenix to Tampa, and then I'll have a driver pick me up from Sarasota Opera, the, there's like a volunteer coming to pick me up at the Tampa airport and take me to Sarasota. So I'll probably get in around like midnight Sarasota time, um, which is fine. But my Flagstaff flight is delayed right now by like half an hour, and that's cutting my connecting I'm really close, so I'm just praying to the flight gods that we get there in time, like early or something, earlier than they think right now. And my bag makes it with me onto the next flight, and then I make it to my. So the other option is that I would have an 18 hour layover somewhere um, and get into Tampa at like 11 tomorrow morning, which would be so bad. <laughs> Um, so that's uh, what's currently happening, and um, I'll keep you up to date on what's what ends up happening with the flights and any thoughts that I have as I approach this crazy time. Hi guys! So as you can see, I didn't leave Flagstaff. My flight was delayed, and that meant I missed my flight to Sarasota. Yay! So. And like the lucky thing is that I didn't try to go and then get stuck in a hotel overnight in Phoenix, but sad news is tomorrow I have a flight day of 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. or 7 a.m. to about 9 p.m. Eastern time. So it's gonna be a long day tomorrow, but at least I get a day with Matt extra. So bright and early morning tomorrow, but tonight we're just gonna have a little fun. We're lighting up the grill right now, gonna have some dinner and uh, 